gang trader after all. <laughs> so for those of you guys that don't know this guy, he's been in a few of my archery hunting episodes in uh, Extreme Archery. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I used to. Yeah, he used to work there. If you guys have seen him around, that's probably why. His name is Dyson. Hey, but we're mainly focused on late archery slash flintlock for today's episode. We're gonna go out on some of these state game land properties around lower Pennsylvania. We're gonna look around pretty heavily, hopefully find some deer sign and some of these state game lands. You know, late season, it's, it's a little bit more pressured hunting. The deer are harder to pattern. Typically in the later season, they're more scattered, they're more aware of humans. Uh, but with that break, Christmas break and stuff like that, we have about, you know, X amount of weeks that haven't been hunted uh, on the deer that haven't been really targeted so we're going to be hopefully figuring out where these deer are uh, in the late season and maybe come back here in Flintlock late archery and see if we can tag one but we're ready to rock and roll we're gonna have a good time so stay tuned enjoy the show boys are back in town that's right Ooh, close-ups <laughs> hey guys so welcome back here we're in the in the woods of uh, lower central I guess central lower Pennsylvania almost and I'm just looking on Honest Max here. Now, I'll do a little demo of approximate uh, location of similar to what we're looking at right now of the terrain, everything like that. But essentially, um, we got in this proper, we got a lot of fields and we got you know, hedgerows, you know, or, you know, briar patches. We got, I think, and we got property that the game commission leases off or the farmers let Pennsylvania hunters hunt that you know, those fields, those harvested fields or whatever, they just have corn and stuff in them. But then we have about 500 of this acre of, uh, of land that is totally wood. So I'm thinking, you know, most people during Flintlock, they're probably gonna hunt the fields. I might check out in the fields a little bit today, um, but we're gonna actually go towards, we're gonna cut range of the wood line and go on the far, farther outskirts of the parking lots. That's where we're gonna start out our search. And the reason for that is, you know, later seasons, the deer might get pushed farther and farther back. If it is in a case of, let's say, a deer is less, more pressure during a later season, they go farther back in the woods. We're gonna keep that theory in mind for today's search. We're gonna go farther back as possible. Yeah, it might not work all the time, but that's what we're gonna focus on. Um, and then, you know, I have a buck tag and I have a doe tag for this late season. Yeah, it might be <laughs> a 30 minute walk to get to that area, but you know, that's, sometimes that's what you gotta do to find the spot that you wanna hunt that buck. So let's go ahead and go in the woods and uh, see what we can find here, Dyson. to be the case most times for myself during late season if I find a sign you see one deal oh you just saw it see there it is a deal getting up <laughs> yeah okay there. you couldn't tell what it was I, I just I was walking and I looked at you and I looked back and I just saw a white tail kick up and it took off yeah it was probably because I was talking what is it it looks almost like trees We don't know if we're gonna be able to get this on record, but essentially what we have behind us, beside us, we got this drill, drill that's going right between a food plot up top there and a food source over there. And in the middle, we have um, a creek water source. And Dyson, from what my understanding is, he saw that deer onto this side, right over there. And it ran down. And he saw the tail and it stopped right behind the green tree. And that's where he saw the deer looking at us then. You know, there might have been more deer with that, but we're not sure. But we're gonna go down here and see if we can find where that deer was at. That's our goal. Dice and I were just following. We're still on that trail. We've been about 10 minutes since we saw that deer. We're still on that trail, we're following it along. But we noticed about every 50 feet or so along this trail, we start seeing these different buck screams. Or buck. Buck rocks. It's, I call it a rub line. You know, I don't know. Is that what you call it, Dyson? Essentially, because it's just a trail that they're rubbing. You know, it's whether that make it. They make those those rubs every single day, or or the, all those rubs the same day, or just come through it and make a different rub a different day. 
this is a natural route where a buck will, will follow. We will we saw about three rubs up top there. I'll just about show you the picture. And here's, here's another one. I almost guarantee you, down lower, we're gonna find another one. No, I just wanted to point that out. You know, clearly deer are using this, even though it's not the most hidden place for deer to walk. They're probably coming here through nighttime and going up to that food source. Let's just take a picture. doesn't look too dried out. As you can sort of probably tell it's from this year. Um, but I was just looking at more so where those little tiny fingers of the actual branch. It didn't look like any of those fall, had fallen really per se on the actual top of the leaf. So probably it might have happened before. Um, but it's really hard to tell because sometimes those things dry out and then they just get disappear real quickly. But keep on following this and I really do believe, Dyson, if we start following tracks and seeing tracks on this thing, you know, whether that's nighttime or not, it's harder for us to tell we don't have trail cams. Um, but that might lead us to another split off trail where, you know, three or four trails are coming in to meet. We, following that thing can lead you to successful, prickly, frequently visited trails, and that's what we're going to be focusing on. If you look on this power strip, that whole section is like that. Yeah. All that that briars, all that stuff is like that. I'm almost thinking, you know, we could we can follow the edges of those and find out where the main routes because there's, just, I guarantee you, deer are crossing that. Yeah. But there's only specific locations those deer are crossing. Now, if we can map them out and figure out the exact spot, in 500 yards of this power line stretches. Yeah. Whether it's walking alongside the power lines or walking until we find a deer trail that crosses that, I don't know. But you know, fresh tracks is what we need to find. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, a power line will be good so with a flintlock. Yeah, you can get, you, you know, 80, 60 yards. You can reach shots. out there, 60, 75 yards. And that's pushing it with the flintlock I have. I, I want to get more than 50 yards on my flintlock, but. Got to do what you got to do sometimes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, dude, those bullets are like, you have about three foot zone with them bullets, man. But, all right, dude, I'm going to take a piss real quick and then we're going to hit up there. Okay. I thought there was a diesel truck coming right at our head. Dude, what was that? It was something in this power line, dude. Maybe like it rebooted or something. Oh. My my heart just dropped. <laughs> I grabbed your arm and was like, what the? <laughs> if you guys didn't hear that on camera, there's like, we're standing right beside the electrical equipment. I was in a, like, imagine a diesel just exploding right beside you, just turning on firing right beside you. That's what it felt like. We could feel the vibration of this thing turning on and we're like, <laughs> Not expecting you because you stand beside power lines all the time and no, nothing ever happens. Dude, my heart. There's a good chance walking through this stuff we're gonna we're gonna pop something. Look at this trail. I know. Is there any footprints on it? It's hard to tell, it's frozen. It is beat. Where? Well there's that and dude. You'll see it on the GoPro footage. That trail back there is beat. Yeah, I know. This is this is a, it, this is absolutely littered with with your sign because they're clearly using this as a travel route to go to that stuff. And you know, right down below us, we have a creek bottom, and right actually above above that, you know. The buck can easily hide there depending on what side they feel like they, they smell something they can easily go on either side um, but your job is to 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 find that best trip yep. guys i was just walking you know how rare it is to find even a, a, a cartridge from uh, a rifle i was looking down here 
I found a cartridge from this year from a rifle, but guess what? It's a br it's unshot. And you know, better that I shoot a couple 3030s back home. But like, you know how rare that is to find, Dyson. I, I, I'll my probably, mind's honestly blown. I would probably never find one like that. You know what probably happened? He probably loaded it right here. Yeah, he was probably walking in from the parking area, was, started you know, loading up and dropped one. I guarantee that's what it is. He's far enough legally. He's probably 150 yards from the road right now. That's probably why. He probably loaded it right here, dude. Dropped one, never found it. That's pretty cool. Hey, guys, by the way, we're going to head back to Dyson. He has a, a, a private section. We were searching around here for quite some time now, maybe an hour and a half. But that's not a lot of time, I know. But... We were walking around. We didn't find exactly what we need. We found a lot of trails, but not a lot of deer sign. You know, like, old. It's old stuff. You know, it's probably throughout the whole year. There was no. F uh, we were. I mean, we were hammering it. We were finding some s absolute killer location, killer trails, um, but they weren't frequent newly used trails. We know that because we didn't see any tracks. We didn't see manure. So you know, okay, we gotta get out of here. We, now there's about a thousand acres here. There's a little, you know, a little bit more, a little bit less. Some areas. With that being said, we only searched about probably about 150 of So there's plenty more opportunities to look around this area for the deer. But Dyson was like, you know what, why? We could just go ahead to that private property we have back in my house. You know, in the past I've seen five bucks, all, all legal, all eight points, all nine points, and, and maybe a six point or so, and he's seen two doe. Um, and in the past, and he's actually hunted that only two years ago. And he said he hunted for two days, so I'll buy five buck and a couple other uh, uh, animals, uh, let's say, you know, deer or whatever, um, in those two days. And last year, I think he, he even said he saw some deer back there too, but it does not get hunted that often. So he's like, well, I, I, uh, you know, if you want to, if you want to, you know, a hunt an area that's unpressured, um, I can let you hunt in that private property. I have permission. So that's what we're going to go head up. He has a stand-up. And, uh, and, and, and if it all works out, uh, we might be able to find some better deer sign than here. You know, out here, the deer are just spread out uh, there's gonna be some uh areas where those deer are more frequently traveling but out where dyson is you know that's where the deer are living you know <laughs> and they're not traveling they're living there so that's what we're gonna be focusing on but you know dude that might actually be the uh bullet i kill a deer with next year that'd be freaking sick <laughs> shoot i lost it we'll find it, Here it is. There we got <laughs> we good. got we got we got all right <laughs> um so let's go back to dyson's house and uh see what we can find on the deer stand Like this looks so good, and there's, it looks like deer are running it right now. This is a, uh, we're here at uh, Dyson's, near Dyson's house here. This is the private location, and uh, from what he was telling me, there's some deer that are consistently moving through here. Um, now it doesn't get hunted that much, which gives us a higher opportunity to get some of these deer. So we're first going to scout this out because Dyson didn't hunt this this year that much. You hunted it one time this year. Okay, did you see it? Doe. You saw three doe the first time. What was this? So, well, early three, archery? My stand's right there. It was the last day of early my, archery. Last day of early archery. My stand's right there, and there's doe. That doe that I was going to shoot. Basically, most of the, the movement I see, I don't know if it's like a pattern or what, but when I saw those, those the buck, all the buck came from out in front of me out here, and they came in within 30 yards. And then every time I saw the doe, um, I had three doe come out right here one time. I had five come out over here in front of me before. Um, so they're kind of moving everywhere. We just need to find a spot. We got to pinpoint where they're going to be at and hopefully hang another tree stand to kind of get wired on some deer. So, And, you know, at the other spot we didn't see much poop, but it started, we're starting to see a little more poop just because it's not as pressured as much, obviously. You know, one being one reason being it's, it's pub, uh, private land. But I was just walking along and, our, and what I'm focusing on is, oh, is manure. So as you can see, there's stuff that's pretty soft here. Uh, that's that's probably within a couple past couple of days. Um, and then right behind Dyson, there's some more poop. I don't know exactly what location it's at right now, but then uh, as we're getting into the thicker stuff, at, back over there it's a little more open, but over here it's a little bit more thick. And I think, you know, if we start finding an absolutely ridiculous amount of poop, there's a good chance we might set out the tree stand up there. Gonna keep on walking here, so we can find more tracks, more poop. Oh, dude, right here. Dyson, this is a really good spot. Told you there's deer here. There's some poop right there. Well, if you look right there, I'm really liking this opening. Yeah. Right there. Right I mean, this could be a few and ones. there's an opening back here. An opening back here and an opening back. What happens if we 
See if we can set a stand up here somewhere. Well, that's what I was seeing. Yeah, obviously it probably mixed sides a little bit, but this is a pretty good spot here, Dyson. Uh, it's this like trail a trail beat. Yeah. And you know, yeah, there's tracks in here. There's plenty of tracks in here. Um, this trail right here. This is really beat. Look at this trail. Super, super beat. And there's, there's fresh poop right there. Right there, there's some fresh poop. This though, this this stands a little old though, right? Yeah, it's like three years. We still gotta fix it. What do we gotta fix? Oh, we gotta turn it. Turn it. Okay. Yeah, you're good. This, this, this stand was originally pretty loose, and what we did was we just ratcheted it a little bit more. It's, it's been up here for about three years, but we just checked to make sure the wood's already pretty good. The wood's pretty good. I know I'm not strapped in, but we're pretty, we're doing pretty good. We're only about eight feet off the ground, uh, so it's not too dangerous, but you know, still gotta be, uh, make sure you get harnessed in when you're doing stuff like this sometimes. Uh, we just put some wedged, some two by four blocks in on either side of the stand, uh, and that, that really secured the stand from shifting back and forth and we ratcheted a little bit more. And and up in this spot, uh, I'll show you just a couple seconds, up in this spot, it's very open. And you can probably see 100 yards every direction, but you can only shoot about 30 yards at a deer. So it's, and there's a lot of branches that can get in the way. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a hit or miss, you know, is what it is. But there's a lot of deer that come through this, a lot of trails, a lot of different stuff that come through this spot. I think we got lots of options on where these deer can come from. It's kind of hard to pinpoint them, but I think we're at a good spot here with this little opening. Um, we're at a pretty good spot for these deer uh, to kind of funnel into us and hopefully get you a shot. Out over the, at the other location, we had a, found a beautiful, beautiful big tree that would have been pretty perfect for uh, setting up a stand. We might do that Tuesday, Thursday afternoon. We might go up there and hunt. But um, so far, so good. We got a nice hanger up here. <laughs> but very rock and roll. Day in the woods with Wild Weaver. We were actually uh, in the woods mainly to, to do some scouting, do some pre-scouting for, for archery season. Actually, this spot near Dyson's house is perfect for uh, for for archery season. You can't you can't use a flintlock back there, and uh, it's too close to houses. But it's perfect, absolutely perfect for uh, archery. I guess we'll see you guys here on Thursday with uh, Dyson and I in the woods of uh, Pennsylvania. Any last words here, buddy? Doe, buck, some. Just want to get wide on a deer. <laughs>